okay, it's okay. You probably think I'm on mute right now, but I'm not. It sort of seems like I'm on mute right now, doesn't it? But I'm just kidding. That's not funny at all, but I'm doing it anyway. But, um, sorry, I don't know what, what just came over me. Hold on, I'm just letting more people in. I just realized at the beginning, I'm always so, no, you didn't, I'm just being weird. You didn't miss anything. Okay, um, wait, oh, oh, thank you. Okay, wait, um, okay, yes. Hello, hello, all right. Good afternoon, Mark. Good afternoon, Alyssa. Hello, Charlie. Good afternoon, Vivian. Hi, and good afternoon, Lakshmi. Uh, Lakshmi, good afternoon, Gabriella. Good afternoon, Jayla. Hi, Michaela. Um, thank you, Gabriella. I'm actually sure if Gabriella is saying I'm not on mute or I'm not being weird, but at least one of those statements is true. Uh, good afternoon, Stephanie. Oh, wait, more people coming. But good afternoon, Stephanie. Sorry, more people coming. Huh? Wait, let me say that again. Good afternoon, Stephanie. Uh, hold on, more people coming. Okay. Okay, and wait. Sorry, sorry. Things happening. Okay, back to good afternoon. No, good afternoon. That was good afternoon, Stephanie. Yeah, I'm not getting, no, I'm not getting, oh my God, Gaslight is such a scary. Okay, Gabrielle, I am, yes, I, right. Uh, Jayla, you missed nothing. I'm just being weird. That's how that whole thing started, okay. Or I'm just gaslighting, oh my God. Um, speaking of gaslight, happy, say, happy daylight saving time, everybody. Um, and yes, we've now started it, not ended it. And yes, it's a singular, not a plural. And no, daylight saving time did not start during an agrarian economy. It's not about farms. It was proposed during farms, but it was started during World War I, during the Industrial Revolution. Thank you very much. Okay, good afternoon, Jay Lynn. Hello, we, she. And good afternoon, we, she. And good afternoon, Andrew. And get, ha, <laughs> Yes, I'm getting, Mark, you don't want to know what happens if I actually get it all out. We'd be, yeah, well, we couldn't afford the therapy. Um, oh wait. Uh, oh, well, uh, uh, and a uh, slightly serious note to at least one direct chat person. No, no, I'm about to acknowledge that. If you, if, even if if you handed in homework to at all, which we're going to get to um, shortly or momentarily, if you've handed it in, you are awesome, and I'm going to praise you directly, and I thank you. And even if it was like 15 minutes after midnight or like whatever, or two minutes after this class, even if Google Classroom says you were late, it is, no, if it's in now, you're awesome. Don't worry about Google Classroom saying that. I might even extend. And it's also true, if you still haven't handed in, you're still like fine. You are fine, fine, fine. Like I owe you guys too much, honestly, for me to be in a position to be getting persnickety about things coming in after the let me be more clear about that. Hold on, more people. That's a very good question that I just got in the direct chat. And I'm not going to say who it is, but I am going to address the question, except that, wait, someone else is coming in. Sorry, hold on. But no, that's like a very legitimate, especially at this point in the semester, it's good to have a good check-in on that. But wait, I thought someone just came in, maybe not. Oh, no, yes, yes, yes. Hold on, hold on. Okay, actually, what I'm going to do, because I'm already getting myself confused, and because I'm going to need Mark to find... <laughs> Mark, get it all out. Yeah, everyone. There's something about that that's very priceless. Um, um, I really want to address this question about like lateness or homework and this and that, especially because I'm late with you guys. So I think, it, and we're now finally like kind of into a rhythm of the semester that it's worth addressing. So I'm going to explicitly address that in a moment. Also, I want to start explicitly addressing the substance of homework number two in a moment. But first of all, if you handed in homework number two at 12:15. You are definitely not late. Uh, that is definitely, and uh, yes, Google Classroom will say you're late because it was technically due. Well, actually that's weird if it, but don't worry about that. But I'll be more specific about that in a minute. Oh, Rachel's, wait, is that true? Wait, is it? I don't have even said hello to the video people yet, but okay, oh, she's behind. Oh, weird. Okay, okay, thank you. So we got Rachel and Celine. Cool, and I, I, knew, I now I like to say hello to the video people too, so I'll do that in a minute, but cool. Thank you for telling me. and. And get, good afternoon, private chat person. Thank you. And cool. Oh, and thank you for saying thanks, direct chat. But God, this feels like the worst. <laughs> if there was like an award given to the podcast that is both the least educational and least entertaining, it would be this one. And it's not a podcast. Um, but yes, but person who's asked the question about the late homework in the direct chat, thank you for the thanks. And even though it's direct chat, just as a reminder, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you my wife ladies and gentlemen wow thank you um 
Um, but thank you for the thanks. And please know everybody that even though that was direct chat, someone asked me a question direct chat. Apparently I sort of answered it, maybe over answered. It. Then they said, thanks. Please remember that is counts, does count as closing a conversational path. Like that person in direct chat, he or she, or um, whatever, um, should submit like a reminder of that to closing a conversational path. She or he definitely gets points for like acknowledging to me that I acknowledged her or him. Um, um, also, I want to acknowledge my wife who just brought me bacon. Um, and yeah, you might think I'm Jewish and I am, but like bacon, come on. Okay. Um, uh, 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 God, I also want to acknowledge that it's Pi Day, but okay, whatever. Um, so I'm still saying hello here in crazy land. So, but thanks for the thanks. Okay, also different direct. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, okay, I'm just going in order here. Like we're going to address the homework. And we're going to address it in more ways than one, like object level and meta level. But with the, particularly this homework too, that just came in or was due this math methods. Like, like did, I think I even, I think I even explicitly said, but maybe I didn't, that the last bit of this math methods homework was about vectors, which we need, but we don't need right now. We need later. So first of all, if you tried and did everything in the math methods, but didn't get to the vector part, First of all, that's totally fine. You really like that. Even if you're being a perfectionist and like want to get everything that I asked for in it exactly at the time that I asked for it, uh, you 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 did. Even if you didn't do the last part about vectors, intellectually, I will say that the part about vectors, I think, for the most part, you could figure out and do just based on the definitions that were put in the sheet right there. Like it is. I try to be self, I think they were self-contained if you had wanted to try to like learn a new thing and figure it out from the sheet right there, but you would have to do that. Like you'd have to understand it from the sheet right there. If you didn't do the vector thing, it's totally fine. That is number one, I, that's to everybody. Number two, we're still in a zone here where the point of the homework is to give you something to think about and struggle with before you come to class, the point of the homework is to make class worth your time. I'm dead serious about that. Like the reason we assign homework before the class, the reason we often ask you to think about material before we've gone over it is so that you have a motivation to pay attention in class and like ask questions, like class, like honestly, and I'm saying this to everybody, If and maybe I said it at the beginning of the year, but now that, or the semester, but now that we're getting more into it, I wanna reinforce, like to me, class is meant to be like recitation in the sense that we are trying, I'm here to help solve problems that you enter the class with, if that makes sense. I, I don't, think anybody can actually learn from things that are presented in a vacuum or on an overhead projector or on a PowerPoint or whatever. Like, no matter how good my answers are, they don't do anything for anybody unless they're addressing needs that people already think they have. So why am I saying all that? That's why I will always assign homework to you like, like before I come in. And I, even if I fall behind in grading your homework, which I totally have, I will still assign homework to you so that you have something that you've thought about before you come here. And then hopefully, ideally, I'm addressing something like work, helping you work out a need that you have. You cannot eat unless you are hungry type of thing, bad metaphor, because you totally can. But I mean, eating is not satisfying. It doesn't do much for people unless they're a little bit hungry, blah, 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 blah. So why am I saying all that? I'm saying we all know, especially given what I'm doing right now, I'm not going to finish going over this homework today. We know that, like, I'm just not. So if you then work on it tomorrow instead of last night and you hand it in, you're still fine. You are still fine. If you fix what you've done for today based on anything I say, that is good. Like if you hand in another revision, if you, um, if you handed it in early, even better, you're doing better in the class because like you're thinking ahead. But uh, and I want to acknowledge in a moment, the people that have already turned it in, like, yes, uh, like they're on an express train to heaven, like, yeah, or whatever, physics, you know, to, to the Elysian and electrostatic fields of physics. But 
That doesn't mean that the people that have not handed in homework yet are going to hell. Honestly, do you, I hope everybody gets that. So like, I'm going to acknowledge in a moment the people that have heard their homework so, so, so they can feel like they didn't just like waste their time or whatever, but the homework can still come in for sure. And I will not punish you for lateness. I will not explicitly punish you for lateness unless or until I like literally make an announcement to that effect. That is to everybody. I will reward those of you who are I will not punish those of you who are late. And I'm talking about the real homeworks here. I'm talking about the problem solving homework. Again, I acknowledge I'm not, I haven't even returned yours to you. So how could I be like that strict about it? Now with the game assignments, yeah, I know it's weird. I'm not saying they're more important, but with the game assignments, they're, they're so quick and they're so quick and they're supposed to be about like what just happened today type of thing that there, yes, if you, as long as you turn it on and say anything, including like I said, hello, you get five points. If you turn the game assignment into day late, you get four points instead of five. It's a minor thing. It's just to keep us, I know that's like almost like a weird standard, but it's the case. With the math problem, I want you guys to be working on it, thinking about it, improving it, drafting it. And sure, the prompter you can do it, the better it is for you because you have more to think about, more to say in class and less to fall behind. But if you have not turned in homework two yet, you are not, like don't, don't start then thinking it's like a thing where it's not worth doing or something like that. It's just not true. So wait, so, yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. Okay, oh, cool. I'm looking at, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I, we will address homework too momentarily. Like that is what we're here for. Uh, is that true? Yes, we will momentarily. Let me just finish going through the chat. Sorry, I'm like, again, this is all like, the, I'm letting it all out thing. Okay, Professor Rachel. Oh, I thought it said Professor Rachel's with me, but it says Professor Rachel is with me, got it now, okay. So hello, hello. Okay, thanks. I'm, I'm just going back to the chat. Oh, funny about the chess. Oh my God. I, okay, I don't want to get myself all distracted, but I don't know why that, it's funny. I don't know. Yeah, that, that's so funny. Okay, sorry. The chess notifications. It's funny that you noticed that. I, I still don't quite, there's something inconsistent about the way the notifications work on my pad. No, I, that game that you guys saw me playing as Walter, he totally demolished me, he totally demolished me. Now we're in a game now, and then there was another game where I almost had him and then he won again. We're in the middle of a game now, I can't believe I'm talking about this. We're in the middle of a game now where I totally, I totally came closer to ever to having him. And then I made what I thought was a really stupid error, but it was still okay. But then I just this morning made a total blunder and then we're still in it. But now he, he's like, cackling somewhere. I can't even go back and look at it because I made such a blunder this morning that he's going to win again. And it's so mortifying. But anyway, thank you for your concern. Okay. But see, I'm still standing. I will still proceed and keep playing him because I don't let my ego get in the way of my progress. Um, okay. Okay. Uh, block him. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Wait. Oh, so that is all the chat. Okay. So last thing, block him. Um, I'll try. Um, uh, so now I'm also just going to say quickly because of my new habit. Uh, I said hello to everybody in the chat. I'm also going to say hello to Gabriella. Hello to Wishi. Hello to Andrew. Hello to Jalen. Hello to Mark. Hello to Vivian. Hello to Stephanie. Hello to Catherine. Oh, hello to Jayla. Sorry. Oh, hello to Michaela. Sorry. I'm saying everybody. Hello to everybody that's not a black box. Again, not to punish the people that are black boxes. I'm not calling them out, but I'm just saying appreciation to, again, Catherine with a... Um, Y, Jayla with a J, Vivian with a V, Stephanie with a Stephanie, Mark, um, Michaela, Jalen, Andrew, Wishi, and Gabriella. Thank you for being, for for transcending the black box. Okay, now we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get to stuff. Oh yes, and happy Pi Day to everybody. I hope. I mean, come on. Oh, and this yes, happy Pi Day, as in three one four or 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 um. But if you think that's like really silly that math and physics teachers like think like three, you know, March 14th, like if you've never thought about this before, it's March 14th. So that's known as Pi Day, even though it's like really stupid. But for the record, it's not as stupid as it sounds. Okay, yes, it is as stupid as it sounds, but it's not stupid to recognize Pi one day of the year. Come on, Pi. Um, I think there should also be an E day, frankly. I mean, like, you know, for my money, E is a pretty awesome deserving number as well. Two quick things about, or three quick things about Pi Day. Um, one, it's also Albert Einstein's birthday. I mean, you know, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, it's Albert Einstein's birthday. Like, come on. Also, as you many of you maybe know, Galileo like died in March of 1642. And then on Christmas, 
1642, Newton was born. I mean, are, are these coincidences? I don't know. Is it odd or is it God? I don't know. Um, but I also know that my physics mentor, so here comes a shout out, even though he never listens anymore, but my, my physics mentor, like the first person that I taught physics with that taught me how to teach physics, and this is like in 1992, um, uh, uh, shout out to him. His name is Tony S. Durian. He taught, us, taught me everything I know about how to teach physics. Um, he and his wife, Susan Asbury, who taught me everything I know about art, which is a lot less, but and, um, certainly taught me how to appreciate art, which I didn't until I met her. Um, they had a child um, named Eli, Elijah Orleans Asbury. They had a child a long time ago. That, he, that child is now like 20 or so, but that child was born in Albert Einstein Medical Center in Sao Paulo, Brazil, on March 14th, approximately 20 years ago. So, I mean, you know, I mean, is that odd or is that, God? I don't know, is that cork or is that fork? I don't know. But um, happy birthday to Elijah Asdurian, who used to religiously listen to these YouTubes for no good reason whatsoever. Um, um, so I want to make sure to, okay, anyway, but it's Pi Day. So it's Pi Day. Um, also notice that Theta looks like the, 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 the um, character that we use for angle measurement is literally a line drawn across a circle. Is that a coincidence? That is definitely not a coincidence. That is what you should think when you think of angles. You should think of sections of circles. That will start bringing us back to the curricular material at hand. Um, speaking of that, and I really will shut up and I'll shut up and begin talking. Um, speaking of the curricular material at hand, which is to say homework two, I also want to do a quick this is also a shout out, so to speak. Um, oh yeah, I totally see that the direct chat. Yes, direct chat person. I totally see that your homework was turned in on time, but Google Class, like, but it was off by 30 seconds of Google Classroom, like totally made you feel like a sinner. Um, that is Google Classroom's fault. Google Classroom is a sinner. Um, uh, and I use that term very lightly, by which I mean classroom. Uh, so quick shout out, I'm just saying, I totally, this is, a good thing, not a bad thing. I'm just acknowledging. I totally understand and appreciate that Stephanie, Celine, Jalen, Alyssa, Rachel, Michaela, Nicholas, Shagupta, Mark, Brenda, Lakshmi, Weishi, Vivian, Andrew, and Gabriella all totally made a very valiant and prompt attempt at this maybe non-trivial homework. I totally appreciate it. Everybody else can still turn it in. Everybody else is still a good person. Everybody else is still working very hard in their life and has a complicated life. But yes, noted. The, since I'm going to take 4,000 years to get this homework back to you because I'm a sinner, and I should stop using that word, really. I'm using it like as a joke, but it probably is offensive. So because I am not a perfect person and a human being, I'm going to take way too long to get these homework back. So we just want to acknowledge that I know that, yes, Stephanie, Celine, Jaylene, Alyssa, Rachel, Michaela, Nic Nicholas, Chagupta, Mark, Brenda, Lakshmi, Weishi, Vivian, Andrew, Gabriella, thank you very much for turning in. I am not looking at the names of the people that did not. I honestly am not. I have no idea who they are. But thank you, those of you who did. It is noted. Like seriously, okay, that's awkward. Now let's get back to other awkwardness, such as math and physics. Um, yes, I'm gonna get back to other math and physics. I'm gonna now also break a slight problem. Before I literally get, we are up to homework too. We are gonna start going over it. I. Okay, yeah, I think I can do this. Okay, uh, let me say there's two loose ends in the air. There's me starting to go over homework too. I would like to do that also as a means of keeping us moving along. Also though, I was in the middle of saying something at the end of last lecture. I was in the middle of discussing phi, the phase constant, and what would happen if we had a bunch, a collection of phase staggered oscillators. I just want to acknowledge that I was sort of in the middle of saying we sort of got to a sub punchline, but not really a full punchline. So I want to acknowledge that um, <clears throat> that point is as yet unfinished and it will be a helpful point for you back in the lab tomorrow. So I would like to get back to that too. I think I can do it after. I think I can start by looking at the homework though. Let me actually, just for one second. Yeah, okay, I can. So for those of you who are like linear thinker, I will get back to the point that I was making at the end of Wednesday. I will get back to that. 
in a few minutes. Let me start going over homework two first, though. And I know I'm babbling, although you can stop me at any time. Open some of here for me for whoa, don't know why that just happened. Sorry, hang on. Whoa, what is going on? Hold on, sorry. Wait, wait, wait. sorry. I don't know what's happening. Someone's Okay, um, so I, uh, hello, uh, people that just joined. So I'm doing homework one. Notice, I, and someone asked me, well, someone who is in this room right now, yeah, someone asked me last week, but I don't remember if it was in this. Someone asked me like, how really do you apply the five-step problem-solving method to these kind of exercises? Granted, some of these are exercise. What did I say? Yeah, homework two, what did I just say? Yes, this is homework two. Yes, this is homework, yes. Sorry, did I? Hope, yeah, maybe I said something wrong. Sorry, but th this is home. Oh, I said, well, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry. Uh, did I mention I'm a sinner? Uh, yes, this is homework two that we're going over. This is question one of homework two. And a question, and it's a bit exercise. Again, this is to lay down math that either we now are like making sure we know and need for later or to lay down math that we will need to know for later. But it's like, it's, it's math methods. It's a bit exercisey and it's a bit mathematical, not physical. So, but I still want us to try as hard as we can to practice the five-step problem solving method, which can even mean in a case like this, like if we're tracking the five step, I mean, cause someone, it was a very fair question that someone raised last time. And I'm not sure if they raised it publicly or privately, but someone asked like, how do we do the five-step method? Like, yeah, good question, but um, I notice, Like, I think we can do it. Um, and I think, uh, I think even if that means inserting a diagram that is not explicitly presented in the question, like all the more reason to present a diagram, honestly. Now, again, I, I'm, I'm just answering the question. I'm just trying to be as thorough as possible whenever I start a new homework. Like I'm saying I can make a diagram here for this. And I think it would be useful for me. I mean, is it literally necessary, vital to get an answer for this? Maybe not for some of you. And am I literally using the diagram in order to do the thing that I'm about to do, which is take a derivative? Maybe, maybe not, depending on who I am. But remember, if nothing else, this is physics class, not math class, which me, although it may not feel that way all the time, but that means we are trying to use the language of mathematics to navigate the physical world of space and time. 
that means we are visual. Like we care about how things are laid out in space and time. So whenever we can lay things out in space of the piece of paper, let's try. So I've got a cosine function here. I want to remind myself what a cosine function looks like. In fact, let me add one other fact that like if I have X equals A cosine omega T, like that means it's a cosine shape, but it means I've got a couple of details there. Like A is right there on the graph. A is, is, x naught, so to speak, right? It's the value of x when t equals zero. So that cosine graph is starting at x equals a, as opposed to being a sine graph or something. Oh, like I gotta that. leave and come back. Oh. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, why don't I just call attention to that? That won't make it any more awkward. Okay. By the way, awkward is spelled with two w's and a k. I mean, seriously, how awkward is that? But and speaking of w, that's an omega in the cosine expression. And where's that on the graph? We're, you know, it. Now, this may not be obvious. It may not be obvious, but I, the more you can get used to it, I think it's really helpful. Like omega is right there in the graph. Omega is two pi over capital T, right? Omega is angular frequency. That means it's two pi over the period, right? Like just like regular frequency is just the reciprocal of the period. Angular frequency is the reciprocal of the period times the conversion factor of two pi, because as I will always say, especially over and over on pi day, there are two pi radians to every cycle. So one cycle on that graph from, no, no. <laughs> I think I'm getting a direct message that's not intended for, oh no, it is. You see, it's punctuation, it's all about, okay, no problem. <laughs> no problem, no problem. Okay, that's hilarious. Okay, I'm not gonna, that's hilarious, direct chat people. I am laughing I, or I'm dying, I'm dead inside, L-O-L-L-M-F-A, blah, blah, blah. But okay, okay, I'm totally ignoring the chat now because it'll get me. Um, what do you mean I have ADHD? Look at that light bulb. Okay, um, uh, please understand that period, how many seconds it takes to do a cycle, literally means how much time it takes to do a cycle, even on a graph, right? And so from one crest to the next is a full cycle. It's a full period. It's a full capital T as measured in the units of the independent variable, which here is lowercase t. So from one cycle to the next is two pi over that omega. I'm just saying, right? So that graph, I don't know. I, it kind of helps me see what's going on, but anyway, then the, well, the question of the exercise. <laughs> oh my God, I'm, I'm totally, okay, okay, I'm totally ignoring the chat. Uh, um, okay, so now it says fine. So the, you know, to the question of the question, the question of the exercise is take the first derivative with respect to T of that function. Now this, we, we, this is practice, hopefully. Again, if you don't get it, don't be ashamed, but do directly communicate with me. But I feel like, you know, this is trigonometric derivatives with chain rule. I feel like we went over this last week. So, I mean, to get the first derivative, so this is practice, right? I think the first derivative is, whoop, hello, is in the wrong color. I'll even say this. I'll even say this. Okay, I'm slightly dragging this out. I'm hopefully I'm writing something down that is clear to people. I'm a little bit dragging it out, which I ask you to do at least at the beginning of the homework. I'm not gonna drag every one of these exercises out. I know many of you people can do it in your head at this point, which is great. Or I know that you have it in your notes, which is great. I'm gonna drag it out here, like really explain myself, partly for those of you who are still getting it, partly as a training model for what I do want in the homework or in exams. Like I 
would like you to explain your reasoning here. We won't have to do it for every single repeated exercise throughout the homework. Like I'll start writing C above, C above, trust me. But but what's going on here? I'm doing step three, you know, um, um, general definitions and principles. And I'm saying A equals, I mean, X equals A cosine omega T is a trigonometric function of a function. So it's going to require trig derivatives and it's going to require a chain rule. I'm just saying, right? Again, that's just a summary of class last time. So I'm going to literally say, maybe this is more of a technical step three that I'm going to do here. Step three, really, I'm saying, I'm saying two things. I'm saying if y equals cosine of x, then dy dx equals negative sine x, right? I'm literally giving a general principle here or a general definition. Like if there's some general function y, right? I mean, please note in the homework, we're not asked about x and y, we're asked about x and t. But I'm saying now as a general principle, I'm saying if I'm given the function y equals cosine of x, then I know the derivative is dy dx is negative sine x, right? That's a general thing I'm saying. I'm not breaking that all the way down, but it is a general truth. I'm also saying if, if, y equals f of x and and g oops, sorry sorry and z equals g of y right if, if i have a function in general and i in general have a function of that function then i know in general that dz dx equals dz dy times dy dx right that's a that is that is a general concept that actually to me whoa hello oh yeah actually to me does make sense actually when i write it that way i'm not saying that's a proof i'm just saying that's a way of writing it that actually almost makes it look like oh that's reasonable and that seemingly reasonable idea is called the chain rule right so i'm there's my general principle that i'm writing out that you might say oh did i really have to do all that well here's what i'm saying in order to get this right in order to get this question you may not think that you're thinking all that because you might have paid attention in class last week or in calculus two years ago but if you get this question right you've got to know those things in your brain somewhere there's no way your brain isn't using those two general principles in order to solve this particular problem right so i'm just slowing down and revealing the movie of my mind in order to then say therefore like so now i'm going to do the work and again did you have to do all of this in order to get credit on the homework? Probably not, but it's a good idea. Um, and the better if you do. Um, so now I do, now I apply this to the particular problem and I say thus. If y equals a cosine omega t or maybe i could have even i could even say i don't know if you like this better but you know if there's an a in there it just stays there but um so then if y goes then Right, so that, um, and then that's the answer to exercise one. I, again, I will not drag out every single one this much, but one other thing. So that's my answer to question one. I also wanna say uh, two things before I forget. I'm saying over and over again, don't overstress the deadlines of your, of this kind of homework. like. If you're getting something out of this right now and it helps you go back and, and actually start the homework, like you had a block when you looked at it, now you don't, great. Like all the power to you. But every like deadlines are loose when it comes to this kind of homework. It's just a matter of just don't fall behind me. But that's not true on exams, just to be clear. With exams, you have, we, so I don't, we're doing all this so that we can practice for exams, but the one thing is by the time we get to exam, yet then it does have to be on time. I just want to make that clear. Um, but okay, that's that answer. There was something else I was just going to say about it. Dy uh, negative a omega sine omega t. There was something else I wanted to say about this, but 
All right, but that's the derivative. I feel like there was something, but okay. That's the answer to that question. Then going on to the next question. Right, okay. So then going on to the next question. Sorry, I can go back if you want. Please tell me if I just move the page too fast. But then the next question is, And I'm just going to make this clear. Now, and again, as I warned you, I'm not going to drag every single one of these questions out. I'm going to start moving a little faster just to give you answers or check your answers or whatever. And also to make it clear, it's not like you have to write step one, step two, step three in the, in the margin the way I am. I'm doing that to alert you. And you certainly can do that in the homework or in the exams. Like I, I think it might make it clearer for many of us, but I'm not saying you have to literally say step one, step two, step three. I'm just, I'm just doing that, but then also, sorry, someone just came in, I think, I think, maybe, sorry, sorry, yes, yes. Um, but now what I am, but so I'll speed this up as I go, but now notice for my general principle for the next one, just know, I'm now my general, like I've already established chain rule, I've already established trigonometric derivatives. Now I'm just sort of pointing out to myself that d2x dt squared, like the second derivative of x with respect to t, well, what does that mean? It means the derivative of the derivative. Like that's what it means, right? And I'm saying that for two reasons. One, I'm saying, therefore, I'm just going to take the derivative of the last thing I did. So I'm not going to have to re-explain everything. But number two, look at the notation. Just look at that notation. Doesn't that actually, like for the longest time, it bothered me that second derivatives were written d2x dt squared. I was like, see, that's just another stupid thing that math teachers do just to like throw me off my game or just to ask me to memorize stupid crap that makes no sense. And it just caused me slowly over time to have my faith in mathematical, in math and in math notation and in math teachers erode. Right, like for the longest time to me, d2x over dt squared just seemed like the most annoying inconsistency. And it just made it feel like math in general was arbitrary and inconsistent, but it's not. It actually makes sense as does math in general. When we break it down to small enough steps, the second derivative of x with respect to t is just that. It is the derivative with respect to time of the derivative of x with respect to time. It's an operation being performed on an operation. It's not, if we wrote it as dx squared over dt squared, which is what I wanted when I first saw this, that would actually be bad because it makes it look like dx dt is being squared. And it's not, it's an operation on an operation. It's not multiplication, just saying, okay? So, but what does this mean to me right now? It means I got to take the derivative of the thing that I had before. I just, I just did remember the thing I forgot before. It just came into my mind and it just left again. Oh, I, yes, I do remember now. All, again, you know, I'm, forgive me if I'm taking things that you know and I'm breaking them down into too many small steps. I want to urge you again to know that there's never any, the worst thing that that's doing is boring some of you. And I apologize for that. But there's never any harm in breaking understanding down into smaller and smaller steps, to, especially when we're trying to teach ourselves something or get better at something, which is the same thing. So therefore, let me say to you, 
if you're looking at this, you're like, I didn't write all of this for mine. Is that okay? Like, fine. It's not about the past. Like if you didn't, you didn't. But in the future, if you're ever looking at something, especially on an exam, and you have that momentary question of, huh, how many steps does he really want? Like, should I, should I actually write out chain rule? Should I actually write out, oh, the second derivative is the blah, blah, blah? Here's the answer. I mean, all of it's a judgment call. All of it is the art of the science. But if you ever ask yourself, huh, should I actually include this even smaller step? Does he actually want that? If you can envision the smaller step, if you can even ask the question, then you've answered the question. The answer is yes. Like, honestly, there's never any harm. There is only good in breaking down our understanding into smaller and smaller steps. So if you can even envision the step that you're stopping and asking yourself, should I actually bother to write this? The answer is yes. And you don't have to write it a million times. From then on, you can refer to it. But we are here to break it down. We are not here to cover material. We are here to uncover material. You know what I'm saying? Uncover, discover. You know what I'm saying? Okay. And since I'm saying in that voice, it must be important. Okay. So, so the answer to this one uh, er, e, uh, is this. That one I should have done in red. So, mm, mm, mm. Okay. Okay. So that's the answer. Uh, yeah, that's the answer to the second question that was asked on the sheet. It was just an exercise. It was just saying, can we? What happens when we take two derivatives of this cosine function? If anything, it's just meant to make sure that you're not going to fall on your sword, whether I call the thing X naught or I call it A, like hopefully that's not in the end gonna bother you or whether it's X as a function of T or Y as a function of X, like hopefully you can take two derivatives of a cosine function of that form. Now, maybe in your mind, you're also making some other recognition now. Maybe you're thinking, as I kind of hope maybe you are, maybe you're even noticing that that terms in the parentheses, the cosine omega T is itself X, good if you're noticing that like good or if you're noticing that we've done this before or that it's somehow connected to harmonic oscillation good 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 like all very good and yes that is the point of it but hey that's not what the question asks the question just asks for us to take the two derivatives so we have done that okay now we think about those insights that we just and again i know i'm talking fast just because like i don't want to bore myself but stop me if there's like really any of you if there's any questions on any of this and again some of you have done the homework, so here now you're finding out whether you did it right or wrong. Some of you have not. Can you use this to do the homework? Yes, you can, because I'm not going to finish going over all this today. So if this was the jump start you needed to like break through, the again, quark bless America. But then if you are going to hand in homework now based on this, please do include lots and lots of steps. Show me that you understand it. Don't just copy it down. Okay. I think that was iambic pentameter or something. Okay. Um, so now we go to... Um, B. Okay, so I'm gonna start speeding up now. I'm not gonna write the steps next to it anymore. Um, but this question here is, and it, of course it's based on A, is X equals A cosine omega T a solution to blah, 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 blah. So the answer is yes.
Okay. Again, technically we're just, we're, this is just practicing or reviewing like something we said um, last time, last week. Sorry. Okay, um, this is just reviewing something we said uh, last week. I'm saying, okay, then, then X, we took two derivatives of X, of this random X that we were trying out. And it turns out that by taking two time derivatives of it, we got back itself times a constant here in known as omega squared times a negative sign. Therefore, it is a solution to some differential equation stating that very fact, right? Like we, so we went, you could argue we went forwards last week and we're going backwards now, or you could argue the other way around. But here, what we found is that the A cosine omega T is a kind of function such that when you differentiate it twice with respect to time, you get back itself times omega squared times a negative. And so the answer is yes. What's the big significance of omega squared? In just this abstracted mathematical exercise, there's no significance really to omega squared. It's just that it is a constant. But so yes, we this just showed that just verifies that a cosine omega t is a solution to, does solve, does satisfy the differential equation of the form d2x dt squared equals negative omega squared x. By the way, between you and me, you the class and me, as physicists in the back of my mind, I'm thinking that's exciting because as a physicist, I know that the differential equation d2x dt squared equals negative omega squared x is the differential equation that describes all simple harmonic oscillators. So as a physicist, what I'm thinking that I just showed mathematically is, oh, an equation of motion that describes harmonic oscillators is x equals a cosine omega t. Like that's the physical discovery we just made. But the, the pure math doesn't know or care anything about that. It's just saying, aha, here's the cosine function satisfies or solves or is a solution to the differential equation of this particular mathematical form. Like, okay, so th that's what the math says. We care as physicists because that differential equation means harmonic oscillation. Um, okay, so that was B. Again, please, I'm sort of, you know, I'm doing the usual thing. I'm like saying very little, but I'm saying it very fast. So stop me or speed me up as you wish. Um, but I'm moving on now. But otherwise, I'm moving on now to the next question, which is OK. C. C is. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, so now we're getting a little more specific. This is actually not the worst question in the world here. Again, hopefully it's like sort of practice E, but it's hopefully also making a point. Question C is kind of saying like, okay, we're getting used to the idea that if you have this sort of diff this second order differential equation that looks like that, like if you have D2 blah, over DT squared equals negative blah, times blah, if you follow, like, so I'm saying if you have the second time derivative of some function equals negative sign times a constant times that function, then A, we're calling that a simple harmonic oscillator, and B, we're saying it seems like cosine functions are the type of functions that satisfy that differential equation. We're saying that cosine functions seem to describe harmonic oscillators. Like that's what we're saying here in general big terms, and that's a very big thing to say. But now we're saying in question C, like, do the details matter? Like, what about these details? Like the detail of omega, like, or the detail of the constant in the differential equation? Like, 
like how in what way does the actual specific value of the constant matter so the answer is it totally matters L like to cut to the chase um and again i'm now just writing answers i'm not necessarily writing everything that you should write to explain things but i'm writing i'm going to say no Whoops, hello well, i am going to say no but i'm going to say no x equals a cosine 5t does not satisfy or solve d2x dt squared equals negative 3x uh, i'm going to show you why in a second but i'm going to well yeah so so why why Okay, to be as clear as, to be as explicit as I can, like that particular cosine function does not satisfy that particular differential equation because 25 doesn't equal three, if you follow what I'm saying. Like, like that equation, x equals a cosine five t would satisfy the equation d2 x dt squared equals negative 25 x, like, in fact, it, it's the case, right? If I take two derivatives of that x, I get negative times 25 times x. Like, right, like here's x, right? So I get d2x over dt squared uh, equals negative 25x, but that wasn't the question. The question is, does d2x over dt squared equal negative 3x? 25 and 3 are not the same thing. So what am I real? So the answer is no. But really, what am I really saying here, which I sort of run out of room, but please, if you're still with me, maybe put in your notes, like please do put in your notes. What really we're saying here is x equals a cosine 5t, like the x that they just gave us to try, x equals a cosine 5t is a simple harmonic oscillator, but it's a different one. It is a simple harmonic oscillator. Please don't get it. Like that cosine function that we're testing, like it wasn't crazy. It would describe a simple harmonic oscillator, just not the one in question. Put more specifically, you might want to put in your notes. What we're really saying is these are two, these are two harmonic oscillators with two different angular frequencies. One's going like, a lot faster back and forth than the other. They're both, all other aspects might be the same. Like they both, they both, in fact, they both are starting at position A, if you like. They both might be masses on springs, but they're masses on springs of different strength and different masses. So they're both starting at five, excuse me. Uh, they're both starting at A, but one's going like choo, 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 choo. And the other is going like choo, choo, choo. Do you see what, right? So, so that's the point is that, this differential equation in general describes harmonic oscillation. This cosine solution in general describes harmonic oscillation. That's, we're relying on that. But the details, particularly the omega detail, distinguishes one particular harmonic oscillator from another. And what's the major distinction? Omega. Because by the way, omega is the thing that will remain constant for a given harmonic oscillator 
like the really the only thing, well, that and amplitude, but it is the identifying characteristic constant of any given harmonic oscillator, the rate at which the oscillator cycles. Everything about it is changing all everything else about it. Where it is, how fast it's moving, how fast it's accelerating, how fast it's accelerating its acceleration, all those things are continuously changing all the time. But the rate at which it's cycling, that is the characteristic identifier of a given harmonic oscillator. This equation is, I mean, this question is asking us to ultimately think about two different oscillators, okay? So, so that's the, so the answer is no, blah, 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 25 doesn't equal three. And if you can fit it somewhere, you know, something like these are two different, these are two distinct Okay, I'm, I'm just, okay. So that's question C. Again, stop me if, and we're almost up to where we were. Two days ago, oh, sorry. Uh, where, where the... Okay, now I'm, I'm really gonna, I'm gonna try to do D and E, I'm just gonna like literally write the answers because I wanna, I really wanna get to F, which brings us back to the lab and where we were. But I think you're pretty clear on D and E, so, but D, okay, so D. So please stop me if you have questions. Other than that, I'm practically just gonna, I think these are almost repeats. Almost. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, this one. D is basically just asking you to prove what I we just did. It's kind of out of order. It's kind of maybe even stupid, sorry. But here it is. So that's one. And then two. Okay, so really this question D is really kind of the justification for C, but this is all it's asking. So there, those are the answers to one and two of D. Then E. e okay, now, now E is just trying to make this more physical. Okay, right? A through D was like the general mathematical pattern of what we're looking at. And it's just trying to reinforce omega squared is any kind of constant. It could be three, it could be five, blah, blah, blah. But now it's saying, okay, what if that constant came from specific parameters of a specific mass spring system, right? And I don't know why the numbering system went off here. I'm sorry. Well. Oh, nope, just kidding. So we're just trying to show in four here, like that's the answer to four is d2x dt squared equals, and I, I did a little multiplication as commutative move here, but equals negative k over m times a cosine quantity squared of k over m times t. Just trying to show, just hopefully you're just seeing the pattern that see that's why that solves the original differential equation that we originally had for a mass on a spring, which was d2x dt squared equals negative k over mx, right? Like that's Hooke's law. 
This is just showing that this is the solution to Hooke's law. That it, I don't know what more to say about it, but that's the answer to four. Or hopefully you're just seeing how this is, how these derivatives and these differential equations are fitting together to describe harmonic oscillation. Again, you totally can stop me. You should stop me if you want, but I'm gonna, but barring that, I'm gonna go on to F now, which will bring us to what, well, F and G, which will bring us to where we were last Wednesday. Okay, so so this, uh, this is just like we were um, talking about on Wednesday. Three, don't let the three point five intimidate you. It's just a freaking number. It's really, really a random number. It could have been any number. It it must be measured in radians, whether it says that or not. I mean, for this whole thing to work, that three point five must be measured in radians. But it's just some number, i.e., it's just some constant, right? So what we said on Wednesday, you know, if we still do trigonometric derivatives and chain rule, we will see this. Oh, no, sorry, what am I saying? Oh my God, sorry, okay. Like I'm still doing chain rule, like I said Wednesday, like we said two weeks ago, I'm still doing chain rule, but that, so I'm doing, I'm, I am bringing the derivative of the inner function outside. I am multiplying the entire expression by the derivative of the inner function, but the derivative of the inner function is just omega. Right, like it's technically omega plus zero, if you like. The derivative of 3.5 is zero. Or put one last way, if you have y equals mx plus b, if you have y equals mx plus b, dy dx is just m, right? Okay, so the derivative is just that, and there, that's the answer to that one. And therefore, the answer to the next derivative is, just this, right? That's the answer to the next one. So then going on and answering G, G is X equals A cosine omega T plus 3.5, a solution to DD, blah, 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 blah. Like the answer is, oh yes. And I'm not even writing the question now because I'm sort of running out of time and you're with me, you get it. The answer to G is yes. Um, and IE, what's my real point then? Then, what my takeaway is that, and I'm saying this to you, whether you write this in your homework or not, I'm saying to you, Okay, now I've got about 11 minutes. What, here's what, I, you probably can't read my handwriting. What I'm saying here is what we just showed, if 3.5 is just any number, I don't, there's nothing significant about it being 3.5. It's just some number measured in radians. What we're showing here and what we showed last Wednesday is that if you differentiate that expression twice, you do get back it itself uh, times omega squared times a negative sign. So, so, 
Every time we're saying the equation of motion for a harmonic oscillator is something like x equals the cosine omega t, what we're now saying is, oh, actually, it's omega t plus any number, that any number measured in radians. That number could be a zero, could be a zero, as we've sort of been tacitly assuming for two weeks, but it doesn't have to be a zero. That's what we're saying, right? There could be an extra number in the parentheses that stands for some number of radians. The number of radians could be zero, but it doesn't have to be. Whatever that number of rate, and we'd still be satisfying the math of simple harmonic oscillation. What we started saying Wednesday was, well, what about the physics of simple harmonic oscillation? I'm saying now, you could stick any number in that parentheses, any number measured in radians, and for now, we'll abbreviate it with a phi, a phi, like, like it looks like a theta on its side, right? We'll abbreviate it with a phi, and call that number the phase constant. It, it is a constant. It would be a constant for that expression, but it would stand for, as we said for last Wednesday, that phi, whatever number is there in radians, would stand for a head start or a delay, like depending if it's positive or negative, would be or negative or positive, really. Um, it would be a head start or a delay with respect to cycle. Like if that extra, if that extra number is zero, it means there's no head start or delay in the cycle. It means that we actually started measuring with our stopwatch or the thing actually started, we started paying attention to it right when it was at the amplitude position. If, there's, if that extra number is a zero, that means when t equals zero, x equals x naught. But if there's an extra bit put in there, like say pi over two radians, that means we actually started our stopwatch a quarter of a cycle into the motion or, or a quarter of a cycle behind. Why do I say a quarter of a cycle? Because there's two pi radians in every cycle. So if the phase constant were pi over two, right, to just two pi, that means a fourth of two pi. That would mean that the object actually started at the equilibrium position rather than starting at the amplitude position. Oh, oh okay. Um, I'm looking at the direct chat. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. It's, that's beautiful, I just got in the direct chat and the person in the direct chat should totally submit this for participation. Yes, the person in the direct chat just said like, they've been thinking about this as translations to the cosine graph. I think that's awesome. It is totally a translation to the cosine graph. That's very good, that's very right. A start or delay, it's like where we're, and if you, if you translate it enough, in fact, yeah, like if you translate it by pi over two, all of a sudden your cosine graph looks like a sine graph. That's absolutely right. Now, why would you ever do that? I mean, no, so great job person in direct chat. Why would we ever do that? Like, why would we ever start our stopwatch when the thing's already in equilibrium position rather than it? Well, if we just had one oscillator, there's, there is not a good reason to do that, really. You could but it would be pretty, we want convenience. If we only have one oscillator, it's pretty inconvenient to do that. We could, but it doesn't, it just makes our life more complicated. But the reason we might ever care about this phase constant thing, this is now to get to what we were saying uh, last uh, Wednesday, we have seven minutes. This idea of phase, where you are in the cycle, starting somewhere other than the beginning, becomes very relevant and useful and convenient if we have more than one oscillator particularly if we have multiple oscillators. So what we said, and now I'm gonna pick up what we said at the end of last Wednesday, imagine.
I'm going to say this very quickly, but this, again, I said it sort of quickly, that's what I'm going to say quickly again, let it sink in. It's totally going to be relevant to your day tomorrow in lab, like really, really where I'm going to warn you right now, you're going to be doing more analysis of last week, then you're not going to be most, you're not going to be taking many new measurements or anything like that. You're going to be analyzing what you found last week in the lab. Okay. And here's something to help your analysis along sort of, um, and I recognize we have five minutes. Um, well, so what I just wrote there, and you can tell me to go back. I wrote, well, phase constants become important when you have multiple oscillators. Imagine a horizontal, now I know he said this last time, but imagine again, or consider a horizontal collection of identical vertical oscillators. When I say identical, I mean, they all have the same K, they all have the same M, therefore they all have the same omega. Okay, so you have vertical oscillators lined up horizontally. Imagine that they're lined up equal distant from one another. So like the first one's at the edge of a meter stick. The next one is like, let's say one meter away or one centimeter, one unit, one meter away. Then the next one's two meters away from the edge, three meters. Like, so you have all these equally spaced oscillators. Now imagine that they're staggered in phase, but by a constant step. Like imagine, and this is what we said, Like they're all identical, but imagine with them when the very first one's all the way at the amplitude, the next one's like say at equilibrium, but the next one is say at amplitude on the other side. And then the next one or whatever you want, but imagine that they're all staggered in phase, but by a constant step. So that like, as an example, it could be, so ex example could be like Y of zero equals A cosine omega T plus zero, then y of one equals a cosine omega t plus one pi over two, then y over two could equal a cosine omega t plus two pi over two, then y three, right? You, this is, now pi over two here is just an example. But imagine that for every next meter of horizontal positioning, we have another pi over two of phase, right now, pi over two is just the example. The example is then if it, in this example where the step is pi over two, what we could say, if you think about it, we could right to so each, we could capture this entire thing. We could collect the whole thing and say, y equals a cosine omega t plus pi over two times x, right? We could do, we could say whatever your x position is, like if you're at zero on the meter stick, then you have no phase delay at all. You're, you're starting at zero. But then if you're at, and I'm watching the time, I have two minutes, just bear with me for those two. And when we say if you're at the next, if you're one meter away, then your phase delay is one times pi over two, et cetera, et cetera. So wherever your x position is, you would multiply by pi over two. Pi over two would necessarily, we could capture the whole thing in this one equation. Pi over two would be measured in radians per meter, right? It's like the number of phase, it's the amount of phase delay or phase um, head start you have per each meter that you are away from the edge, right? Pi over two is just an example. Pi over two could be any number. What we call that number in general is K, not is K, not the K of Hooke's law, but a different K. K is angular wave number as in lab three, okay? And it's called angular wave number. And we're, I'm just about done. It's measured in radians per, per meter, not radians per second, radians per meter. K is to space as omega is to time. Omega is the number of radians per second that each individual oscillator is cycling at. K is the number of radians per meter that designates the phase of any one of these horizontal oscillators. Put this arrangement together, a hard, and this is my last thing, it's 130, but look, this arrangement of horizontally equally spaced phase staggered vertical oscillators 
is a freaking wave, right? It's a wave. Like if you did this, you would see a ripple go horizontally from one side to the other. This is a wave. What is a wave? A wave is, is oscillations harmonically in time spread out harmonically in space. K is the phase constant per horizontal position. Omega is the oscillation rate per time. I'll just, but that's what K means. Okay, oh, that's it. You've been very patient. Um, um, have a lovely day and a lovely lap tomorrow and I'll see you when. Yes, thank you. Have, yes, see you when. Thank you. Stop being a dick.